Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson is one of the most polarizing prospects in this year's draft class. He probably has the highest ceiling of any of the quarterbacks that could go in the first round, but maybe also the lowest floor. He doesn't have a ton of experience, but what he has is extreme athleticism. We haven't seen an athlete like this probably since Josh Allen was taken out of Wyoming. As far as the size of six foot four and over 240 pounds, but able to run a 4440. And oh, by the way, he's got the strongest arm in this year's draft class. So don't sleep on Anthony Richardson. He does need some time to develop at the next level, though. So whoever drafts him, you have to be patient. But in the end, it may pay off in a big way. Juju Brents, cornerback from Kansas State. Long, physical corner. He's almost 6'4", which is a rarity to see uh, at that position. He's a very good athlete for his size, although with that height, he is a little laggy getting into and out of his transition. For a corner, he is willing to come up and support a pretty solid open field tackler. He may best fit in a zone coverage scheme. If he does play man coverage, his best chance to win is jamming the receiver at the line of scrimmage on his release. He can turn and run. He's more of a long strider and he has to build up his speed. I see him fitting in an NFL scheme. Some teams may look at him as a free safety because he is a good tackler in space. My comparison and my pro player comparison to him is Benjamin St. Juice. While there's not an obvious top 10 wide receiver in this class, right below that late first round, early second round, there are plenty of options who are gonna get taken rapidly in the back end of that first round. And I think one of them could be Josh Downs out of North Carolina. A little bit undersized at 5'9", 171 pounds, but boy, does he blow you away when you throw in the tape. He plays much bigger than that with 448 speed and a 38 and a half inch vert at the combine. You see some of that explosive power, more of a slot receiver at the next level and special teamer, that third asset of the game that we sometimes forget about, which is why I compare his game to Tyler Lockett out of Seattle, a player who's had a really nice long career, explosive playmaker, both on the field as a receiver, but also in the return game. That's an area I think Josh Downs could flourish and have a really nice NFL career. BYU left tackle Blake Freeland is a massive player. He's six foot eight and about 320 pounds. When you watch him on tape, he can really move his feet. He's athletic, he's good in the run game. The problem I have with Freeland is at times he can struggle with speed rushers in pass protection, and you never want that for your left tackle. There's a lot of disagreement in the scouting community about Blake Freeland. I think he's going to develop into a good left tackle. He's never going to be a dominant left tackle, but he has the ability to hold up and be a guy who can protect the backside of a quarterback. Who's he compared to? How about Raiders left tackle Colton Miller? When he came out, had a lot of the same questions, but has quickly developed into one of the better left tackles in the NFL. All right, let's talk about Addie Tamawa out of Barway, out of Northwestern. Yes, it took me a little bit of time uh, to get that pronunciation right. Defensive lineman, 6'2", 280, uh, and get this, ran a sub 4'5", in the 40. So let me just pause there and repeat that. A sub 4540 at 62 280 out of Northwestern. Crushed the combine. Stock went up. This is a guy that's got a condensed frame. He's very thick, very athletic, uh, can move people around, create a lot of a lot of clutter up front at the point of attack. I think the best position for him is a multi-gap defensive end in terms of a 3-4 scheme. Uh, and he kind of reminds me of Milton, Milton Williams out of the 2021 NFL draft. Darius Rush, cornerback out of South Carolina, and his comp, Richard Sherman. Rush came out of the 2022 season as a day three prospect. Then he exploded on the scene of the Senior Bowl, where you'd be hard pressed to find a more dominant three days of practice. The word is often overused, but in this case, he was a legit shutdown corner in one-on-one -on -one drills time and time again, and that's unheard of. Then Rush went to the combine and he blazed a 4-3-6-40. Pair those eye-popping numbers with these. He's nearly 6'2", he weighs 196 pounds, and he has 33-inch arms, and it's hard not to believe there wasn't more hype around him during the fall. Oh, and he hasn't even been playing the position that long. He switched over from wide receiver after the 2018 season, and he didn't even see extended playing time until 2021. Basically, he's just scratching the surface of what he can become. Rush was incredibly popular with South Carolina coaching staff, and he'll be a special team standout from day one. Daniel Scott, Defensive safety out of Cal. 
uh, is a very quick twitched athlete, but he's a little stiff through his lower body. There's no question about the aggressiveness. He comes up and attacks in the run support part of the game. Uh, he does get a little out of control in space. Uh, when he's in zone coverage, he is quick twitched out of his transition to close the, the short and intermediate routes. He's a little tight in his hips when he has to turn and run with vertical threats down the field. He plays with a lot of smarts, a lot of savvy. He has good hands on the three interceptions that I saw on tape. I think he's going to be best suited in a zone scheme because of his smarts and how well he plays in zone coverage. My NFL pro player comparison to him is Andrew Sendejo. Will Mallory, tight end out of University of Miami, reminds me a lot of Luke Wilson. And look, you're not drafting Mallory for his inline blocking abilities. You're drafting him because he's a plus athlete who can create middle of the field matchup problems. He's a threat in the passing game at all three levels, and he can stack defensive backs with long strides. It also helps that he's a big catch radius target who has legit straight line speed. That speed, by the way, was confirmed in the combine where he ran a 4-5-4-40. Mallory, who measures 6'4 and weighs 239, could stand to add some weight. It's no surprise that he didn't run through a lot of arm tackles at Miami, but he does have sure hands with a drop rate of just 4.5%. He struggles to block at the point, but that isn't uncommon for college tight ends. And while his straight line speed gets your attention, his lateral mobility is just average. That said, he'll be a chain mover and a reliable target at the next level. Evan Hull, running back out of Northwestern, plays a lot like Ryan Matthews. Tough, hard-nosed runner who is not only an asset as a receiver, but he regularly ran Northwestern's offense from the Wildcat. And he also has kick return ability. In addition to his running style, which at 5'10", 214, is between the tackles tough with the benefit of that 4'4'7 speed. He runs through arm tackles all day long and has the open field juice to make defenders miss in space. Added bonus, those aforementioned pass catching skills. Hull hauled in 55 passes in 2022 and 33 the season before that. He improved his draft stock with a strong senior bowl and combine, but if you watch him in the fall, it was easy to see the offense ran through him. Hull's game isn't one cut and take it to the house. He's more workhorse than home run hitter, but his playing style is a fit for a lot of NFL teams looking for an RB2. Jalen Jones, 6'2", 200 plus pound corner, a very, very long strider guy, has unique length that he utilizes in bump coverage. He understands angles. He played the boundary corner as well as the field corner for the Aggies this past season. A guy that I believe will have a better pro career than collegiate career. The potential is there for Mr. Jalen Jones. You talk about being able to be a good sound tackler, being disruptive at the line of scrimmage and understanding and knowing how to play in space with a guy with his size is something that I've noticed from Jalen. When you talk about his skill set, his length, and how disruptive he is at the line of scrimmage, his NFL player comp is Mr. Al Harris. And we know how Mr. Al Harris used to love to put his paws on pass catchers that lined up in front of him. I see the same thing coming from Mr. Jalen Jones. Emil Ikior, offensive guard out of the University of Alabama, is a undersized but very athletic, quick twitched offensive lineman. He's going to fit best in a zone scheme. He's excellent lateral quickness. He can move in space. He works well out when he pulls. He can adjust his target to his target in the open field. In pass pro, uh, he is quick to use his feet. He can adjust to finesse moves. The biggest negative on him is play strength at times. He has a tendency to get his pads high, and when he takes on power rushers, he'll get bowled back to the quarterback. The interesting thing about him is I believe he's going to project better at center than he does at guard, but showing that versatility uh, will make him more valuable. I think he's going to come in. I think it's going to take him some time, but he will be a starter, but he must fit in the right scheme. My pro comparison to him is Jeff Fain.